Hi Campbell, I'm Jill Gomez with Voices, here to talk to you about Center for Amazon Community Ecology and your work with the organization that you established here in State College. Uh, I have a few questions, so um, answer what you like. If something is awkward for you or you'd rather not, then please feel free to say you'd rather not answer it. So uh, first I wanted to know, how did you first become interested in working with the Amazon region and its people? Well, I fell in love with the Amazon uh, even before I went there. Um, my work, uh, yeah. I lived in Brazil as a child, and so the idea of the Amazon being an important part of that region of the world has been with me ever since I was a kid. And I got involved in environmental work right after college and worked on saving the whales and from that uh, concern for endangered species, then the idea of working to help conserve tropical rainforests was, was a pretty obvious thing to do. So I made my first visit to the Amazon in Brazil back in uh, 1987 and traveled all around Brazil and parts of uh, Peru just to get an overview. And as I then got involved uh, working on the political aspects of deforestation with Greenpeace, I saw that there was uh, a huge need to try to affect the policies that affect that region, both dealing with uh, things like uh, World Bank loans, international tropical timber trade. And as the years went by, I realized that I really didn't want to work on the global scale anymore. Uh, that what I really wanted to do was to work at the community level where you can see the interaction firsthand between the people who live there and the wildlife and the incredible plants in the region. And what inspired you at that point to begin setting up CACE? How did you, how did you first develop the idea to begin the organization here, and what sort of steps did you have to take to, to do that? Was that, or did that come later on? Well, as I was working on the political side of things with Greenpeace, uh, the issue that kept coming up was, well, if you don't want uh, to see things like logging and other destructive practices, what's the alternative? And so I actually uh, moved to State College to uh, enter the PhD program in ecology here at Penn State with the fantasy of working with an indigenous group in the Amazon to try to find those alternatives. So I spent a couple of years uh, working with a group called the Tembe Indians in the eastern Brazilian Amazon studying the ecology, sustainable harvest, and marketing of a variety of things that are called non-timber forest products. And these are basically fruits, fibers, resins, uh, anything that people can collect and use from plants other than cutting the tree down for the timber. And that was uh, very enriching work. Uh, but I only got it to the point where we did certain basic studies about the sustainable harvest and, and frankly saw that there were a lot of challenges both to harvesting sustainably and even harder to find uh, products that could be harvested and sold that would be worthwhile for the people. And this is primarily true because uh, selling these products in a raw state uh, is a lot of work and has very little return uh, for the people who sell them in a raw state to somebody else. So what I really wanted to do in forming the center was to continue that type of work, but to take it another step farther. And that was the idea that if we could look very selectively at products that have a potential for the people themselves to process them further and sell them as value-added products, then we could be fulfilling two very important parts of the conservation picture. One is to simply help people uh, in the forest generate more income to help them buy basic things, uh, help them put their kids in school, buy medicines, etc. And also if we could find a way 
that people could be spending their time uh, doing things that were lucrative with minimal impact, there would be a real concrete incentive for them to not be as engaged with activities such as uh, destructive logging and cash crop agriculture that can be profitable in the short term, but obviously have a very harsh impact on the forest themselves. answered a lot of my questions. <laughs> no, really just a, a, a couple further down. Um, what would you say, uh, or how would you say that your involvement there has affected your life, your involvement in the Amazon area, uh, working with its peoples? Well, from admiring the rainforests from afar, and really, I, I think like a lot of people, having a uh, a fantasy and a very idealistic view of, well, we have to save the rainforest and we have to stop all the bad stuff now. Um, working with the people who live in that region, you know, has been a, a very important education. Um, so on the one hand, I've certainly loved living and working with the indigenous people who have a just a, a very profound, intimate knowledge of their environment. So walking through the forest with elders like Lodival Tembe, and now working in Peru uh, with people like uh, Elias, who's a, a Bora Indian uh, in the community of Buria Nueva, where we work, uh, they're just walking encyclopedias, going around and showing, you know, this bark is used for a medicinal product, this resin is good for illumination, uh, and the women who have this uh, great palette of colors that they can create out of leaves, 